guys, it's Ed from Experimental Airlines with a new plane to show you. This is the J. Scott, dedicated of course to our favorite Josh Scott from Flight Test. This is dedicated to Josh and all the other noobs out there who sometimes don't get the respect they deserve. But uh, hope he's enjoying this plane right now and I'll show you a little bit about it. The J. Scott's made entirely of Dollar Tree foam board, colored packing tape, a little bit of duct tape, hot glue, Gorilla Glue, and two-sided foam tape by 3M. It has a 45 inch wingspan, it's 35 inches long. It weighs 1,050 grams all up weight with a 2200 milliamp hour battery, which gives about 8 to 10 minutes flight time. It has a removable wing, removable landing gear, and a removable vertical stabilizer, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, in keeping with Josh Scott's preferences, the J. Scott incorporates a lot of weapons technology. Um, I had to decommission the uh, machine guns, but before I did, you can see that it had a nice career of shooting down Bixlers. It also comes equipped with a nicely sized bomb bay which was specifically designed for a 12 ounce soda can and it will in fact loft and drop a full 12 ounce soda can. It also likes to drop up to 30 of these uh, Nerf darts and can also drop paratroopers and cargo as well right out of that bomb bay. This is servo actuated and it will just fall right out like that. These excellent graphics are by Roman Serebryakov who was the winner of the Pride Plane Contest built the Lastivka, a 60-inch photon-like motor glider. These are amazing vinyl decals that he designed and sent to me. There's Josh Scott. It has half-length, very generous flaps, which can be lowered for short takeoff and landing and rough surface operations. Very generous uh, ailerons as well. Of course, an elevator and a rudder. Here you can see the flaps in their retracted position. About 20 degrees deployed for takeoff and cargo carrying, and about 40 degrees for stole operations. The ailerons, rudder, and elevator. The cargo release is comprised of this servo with a short pin of push rod, around which is wrapped this rubber band, which is anchored at this spot on the opposite side, and that's simply released by actuating the gear channel on my radio, and falls right out. As with all EA planes, there are no plans for this. However, I will show you some of the dimensions too if you hope to replicate it. This is a standard configuration 5 inch airfoil cord arm and wing with a 2 inch flap, a 2 inch tapering down to 1.5 inch aileron here. The fuselage tube is a 2.5 inch nominal, that is, the paper removal intervals are 2.5 inches. The actual outer diameter is just over 3 inches wide and tall. It's 30 inches. From this point to the tail and is simply tapered up by slicing off the bottom there, more or less parallel with the ground. The steerable landing gear is mounted on the flat non-tapered part just in front of the taper right there and is attached by a push rod through here to the rudder servo right there which is of course attached releasably from the rudder as the vertical stabilizer is detachable with this nylon wing nut. Vertical stabilizer effective root cord is six inches, tapered down to four inches with a one and a half inch rudder. And the horizontal stabilizer is a six inch effective root cord, tapered down to four and a half inches. And there's a one and a half inch elevator as well. The span of the flap is eight inches, and the aileron span is 12 inches. These little winglets are made out of uh, CD cases cut with a two sided foam tape attaching them onto the wing tip. The wings are held on by three rubber bands per side, total of six, I've already moved a couple, and these are fixed in the rear around the carbon fiber shaft which goes to about here. It's simply located within this, the fuselage tube, it's not affixed by any means, and the carbon fiber rod comes to right here so that the rubber bands are simply left on the plane here and affixed over the front of the wing in the front, and the wing is easily removed. The aileron and flap servo leads are removed and the wing can be separated from the plane. This wing is 45 inches in wingspan, has a 5 inch airfoil cord plus 2 inches flap and a 2 inch tapering down to 1.5 inch aileron and can be collapsed for transport by removing the spar through the wing tip here. You'll see there's a little tab which can be rotated down so it protrudes below the winglet and that withdraws the 
spar pusher. It's a short, short section of carbon arrow shaft which is used to push the main spar completely into place. To complete the breakdown, just remove the entire spar like that, and the wing folds in half like that. To reassemble the wing, simply straighten it out like this. Take the main spar, push it into place till flush, and then use the pusher to push the spar into its center location, which is uh, 30 inches and goes from about here to here. Nice strong unitary wing again. The motor is a Turnagy D2836 8-turn 1100 kV outrunner brushless motor with a 12 by 4 master air screw prop. This generates about 1200 grams of thrust and 350 watts. It's equipped with cooling uh, slots in the cowling behind which are the Hobbywing 40 amp ESC on this side and the 5 amp, sw amp switching BEC on this side. I used a 5 amp separate BEC as this has 7 separate servos and so that's a potential for a pretty high amp draw. The receiver is here, it's a Turnigy Orange RX with everything kind of cluttered and plugged in together right there but enough that the door will close. And there's also a satellite receiver, this is the lead to it and that satellite receiver is located here in the fuselage with the antenna oriented 90 degrees opposite the main antenna which is located here at the bottom of the plane. Uh, for good reception of the ground signal. The landing gear are simply foam uh, wheels on a piece of music wire and affixed inside the bulkhead which is a piece of balsa sandwiched in plastic gift cards. This is a narrower gauge music wire and a truss head screw screwed and glued into place and the landing gear can be removed for transport or storage just like that. Squeeze it together, put it back in place around the screw and it holds itself in place. Any landing forces upward against this tend to tighten that mechanism to hold it in place better. The bomb bay is of course specifically configured for a 12 ounce soda can. It is lined in plastic gift cards uh, both for durability as well as to stiffen up this area of the fuselage which of course is missing a structural piece but this seems to be fairly stiff. There is a solid bulkhead here in the rear. Here is the cargo release servo mechanism which is simply a 9 gram servo short piece of push rod, carefully smoothed on the back so it doesn't tend to rupture the rubber band prematurely. And the rubber band is brought around over the cargo bay and placed just on top of that push rod. And when the mechanism is actuated from your radio, it just pulls that pin out and releases the rubber band and allows the cargo to fall right out. The rudder servo is located on the top of the plane with one push rod going to the rudder itself and the other one going to the steerable tail wheel so that they move in tandem. To remove the vertical stabilizer, this push rod is removed, this nylon wing nut is removed, and this can be taken out and then stored separately or laid down flat against the horizontal stabilizer for compactness. So hope Josh, Scott, Chad, David, and even Bixler are getting some fun out of the J. Scott, dropping some good cargo, doing some good short takeoffs and landings practice, and uh, all sorts of other good stuff. And like all other Experimental Airlines planes, there will be no plans for this, but I'm happy to assist you in building this plane or even one better than it using your own ideas, but the Experimental Airlines techniques. So send me a private message or a comment. Let me know how I can help. Take care. Be well. Blue skies.